Hello, everybody. George Kenner. If you recently subscribed to my channel, thank you very much. I have started off on a CNC journey, and I've promised to share with people the heartaches, frustrations, rewards, and successes as I go through this process. As you know, I purchased the Stepcraft M1000. I would consider this more favoring the professional side of machines than a starting hobbyist machine. I have a vacuum table, I have an automatic tool changer. I've got some things on this machine that I haven't even used yet because I'm still in the learning process. And like the tool changer, I'm not even sure what tool to use, let alone what tool to change to. So as I go along, I'll continue to share this stuff with you. When I first started, I said that what I wanted to do was be able to make an in-cut cutting board that was inlaid. I saw one on YouTube and I thought it was just the most fabulous thing in the world. I commented earlier, what does he have that I don't have? Well, the CNC machine, I fixed that. So then I went out and I started to buy some wood. I bought a big piece of black walnut. It cost me over $130 at Rockler. It was probably enough to make at least one really good size cutting board out of, but when you start doing all the cutting, there's a lot of waste. And I thought, you know, I'm not proficient with this. I'm gonna to go to some poplar and red oak. I'm gonna cut it up and I'm going to see what I can do with the tools that I have. This is that board. And what I did today was I put it on the CNC after cutting and gluing it and getting all the ingrains head in the right direction. And I used a surfacing bit. Well, the surfacing bit left burn marks. Now, I didn't know why that would happen. And I started to read and I could have had my spindle head going too fast. Some of you would call it the router head going too fast and I'd burn the wood. Well, I slowed it down and that seemed to help a little bit, but I really think what I did was I was using a bit that I may have burned even on this piece of wood or in using it as an MDA surf, MDF surfacing board because I have a vacuum table and you can put a spoil board um, piece of MDF on it. So what I did was I got this just perfectly level. And this side I've even sanded. Now, my girlfriend saw this and she thought I put the stripes on as part of the design and she thought it was fabulous. She says, finish that up. Let's get that oil to start cutting on it. And I thought, no, that's not exactly what I wanted. I am gonna save the backside as a lesson to myself, but this front side, I'm sure I could either put it through my planer or resurface it after I put the inlay in. But I wanted to show you how far I got with this. And um, it's not a finished project. When you come back, I'll show you more. I think going through the projects that we've done as beginners and share with each other, the more we're going to get out of this. There's successes and there's failures. This is um, one of my first attempts at using V-bit to make an inlay of a pattern. This is a little Punisher, female Punisher. And what I did was I went into the program. I put the ponytail on, I put the little star in the head. There are two programs that I utilize one is called V-Carve Pro, made by a company called Vetric that's in England. If you write them a letter, they say they get back to you in 24 hours. I heard back 48 hours later for my problem, and they didn't solve it. I ended up getting the solution that I needed off of a forum on Facebook. But let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, it's a Sunday afternoon, even when I'm doing this. I went on Facebook because I just want you to know what you're going to get a response, but what's the timeliness of the response? I put this in in two forums. I didn't get an answer in like four and a half hours and I decided I was just gonna start making the video. So if you think you're gonna get a solution just by popping online immediately and going into a forum, probably not gonna happen. If you don't have that amount of time, you know, to continue experimenting, then, you know, maybe this isn't the hobby for you. But like I said, the, the quality of the machine I bought is really more professional. Once I get this mastered, I'm not gonna be calling anybody. People are gonna be calling me. I've gone to the University of YouTube and I wanna tell you who my favorite professor is. His name's Mark Lindsay. Big shout out to you, Mark. 
I watch all your videos, and I don't want to make myself sound stupid, but most of them two or three times. You are the best instructor I've ever seen. I'm going to put a link down to uh, Mark's channel in the comments. If you are looking for a good instructor to get started in VCarve Pro or any of the other Vetric programs, Mark's the one to get started with, in my opinion, highest endorsement possible. So let's go to some of the mistakes. I took a V-carve pattern. I went and got a badge. Now, one of the things that's important, let's say that you have a logo from a company, and say it's the Ford logo, but you don't have it in a pattern that will cut out. You can go in and model that in the V-Carve Pro pattern, and it'll give you a bunch of lines and arrows. It's basically the pattern that this pops out, but when you extract it from a logo, it doesn't come out perfectly, and you have to go into the program and modify it. I went in, this is a Border Patrol badge for one of my friends, and in one attempt, but it took me about an hour and a half, almost two hours, to really clean this up so that it would carve. I set it for a 60 degree V bit, and it ate the whole eagle in the inside. Now, when I showed this to a couple of my friends, I want that. I'm thinking to myself, that's trash. I can't, I couldn't sell that. I didn't even feel comfortable in giving this away. I flipped it over and took a smaller bit. And I got a little bit better results, but I still ate the eagle. Now, I started to look, and I did all the studying that I could, and I think maybe I needed a V-bit that's like a 22 degree that's a little bit smaller, so off and away I went, right over to Amazon. I purchased some 22 degree V-bit in mills, and we'll see what happens when those come out. Now, this is not a big thing. I'm just gonna take this and put it through the planer behind me. I'll take off a few, you know, I'll take this off and this off, I'll end up with another piece. Because I'm starting with a little better than three quarter inch stock. So it's no big deal. I, I'm not, it's not as though this piece is ruined. One of the reasons that I bought that planer, and I'm telling you, I'm really satisfied with that thing. It's a phenomenal tool for the price. I went to some of the traditional stores for woodworking tools, Rockler, Woodcraft, those places. They wanted $50 more than Home Depot. Home Depot delivered it and beat the price by 50 bucks. Now, it may have been because there was a recent price increase and they had stock, who knows, but Home Depot, thank you very much, saved me 50 bucks. So, inlay. Mark Lindsay's got an article on inlay, and my first inlay was a female Punisher, and it turned out phenomenal. I gave it to one of my friends. He absolutely loved it. I posted a picture of it on the Nextdoor app in the neighborhood. I had a gentleman make a comment on it. Next thing, we were in a conversation, and I found out he was a veteran in the Army, and he'd worked on tanks in a tank battalion. And I said, how'd you like one of these? And I wanted to learn how to modify the base Punisher. So what I did was I, I moved some stars over here. I put a star over there. This piece of maple was a, a remnant that had to be cut off because there was a big slit, but all hardwood's valuable. So I planed this off on both sides, taking the little bit of warp that was in the board. I put what some people call a bow tie, but I did it in the shape of a star so that the wood would not come out. I left the rough edge on this because the Punisher he, he kind of makes do with what he has, and it, it kind of met the military theme. This looks like it could have been off of an old case on. Let's talk about wood for a minute. One of the things that was at least underrated in my mind was how I was going to have to learn the software. And once that became apparent to me, what I did was I went out of the garage and I took some odd shapes, pieces of scrap wood, and I glued them together. This was longer, had a little dent in it. Um, I had to figure out what I could make out of this and take the base measurements, establish what my piece was going to be, and then go into the program and cut something out. Well, this turned out to be a cutting board with kind of a dish hole in it. And I, I was able to model it all up. 
I would underestimate or not be telling you the truth about the need to be able to manipulate the program so that you can come up with an end product. And then once you get the end product, of course, you've got to finish it. Now, this particular piece I made with my girlfriend, and we went to Home Depot and purchased this little sideways cut off by the wall. What it does, it'll cut in, and when you make this, you have the irregular piece or pattern that comes on the outside. You've got to cut through that and then you've got to sand it. I bought all Festool sanders that will suck up the dust right off of the board. I want to keep my dust down. As I've said before, I'm getting older, I don't feel like breathing any dust. I've been wood banking. I owned a sailboat as a much younger man and we used to go to a place called Frost Hardwood Lumber to buy the pieces of wood we need to modify you know, like the handrail, if you had to make a new handrail for your boat. And we'd go in there and buy the mahogany or whatever was necessary. I thought that company was long gone, but I looked them up. Frost Hardwood Lumber in San Diego. They're no longer down by the bay where they used to be when I was a kid. They're up in Miramar and they have a huge facility. When you go to Rockler, you're going to see so much wood. And there's really a pretty good selection. And I found some exceptional pieces at Rockler. I bought in Phoenix some big slabs of Purple Heart. I've never seen anything like them anywhere else on the planet. Had to buy them. So where you buy your wood doesn't really matter, but Frost Hardwood Lumber, if you're in Southern California, it's definitely a place that you want to go check out. Let's go back to bits and how I burned. Bits are something that are very important, bits and end mills. I, when I got started, I bought two sets of end mills off of Amazon. I've used a couple of them that I was able to pretty easily identify what was the quarter inch end mill, excuse me, the one eighth inch end mill, and that's what I started working with. These are all eighth inch shafts and smaller end mills, but when you get into the program, what you realize is having the tool is one thing, but the recommendation for the speed and the rate at which to use the bit is important, which is exactly why I ended up with this problem. Now, I think there's a 50-50 chance that the stripes are because the bit got old, um, used, and dull from the MDF. But the board is absolutely perfectly smooth. It could also be the oil content. The red oak did not have as much of the effect as the poplar did. So this is all part of the learning curve and something you can expect. But, you know, looking at all wood, it's beautiful. I'm, you know, why not? I bought a keyhole bit. This will go in, plunge in, leave a surfaced edge so that you can very easily slide it on a nail and, and hang the piece. It took me about two hours to figure out how to use that bit and program it flip it over and do it. Now the next one will probably take me an hour, honestly. And then after that, it'll probably take me five minutes. So as you, act, as you become acclimated to your machine and more familiar with the programming, what you'll find is the speed, the effectiveness, and the quality rises. I'm seeing that myself. <sighs> one of the best things I bought, the ISO tunes. They're comfortable, fit my head well, and I can listen to a podcast while the machine's running. My machine has a vacuum table on it, so I have a vacuum that drives the vacuum table. I have a vacuum to pick up the chips. I have an air compressor that can potentially kick on, and I have the spindle running. It gets kind of loud in the garage. I want something like this. So if you're thinking about um, getting involved, you may want to factor these in. They were under $100, but I'm, I'm really very pleased with these to this point in time. The overall impression of my machine so far, I'm very impressed. There's a couple of things that I wish I had known that were just a little bit different, but you know, I blame all that on myself and lack of knowing the right question to ask. The tool changer. I don't have my tool changer set up yet. It would make sense that, you know, I'm going to have potentially seven different bits that I will be able to go in and grab to use from job to job. So I don't have to stand and put each one of the bits up into the automatic tool changer, which is really a lot faster than putting it into the collet every time. But still, I don't have enough knowledge of the bits 
and the programming to complete the jobs. I'm experimenting, so I have that all set up. I bought even some more collets and eyelets to do, but I, I tool changer is about a thousand bucks. So, and then with all the collets and everything else, you add a couple hundred dollars more. I've got that, but I don't know how to use it. Once I get it set up, you will certainly see it running. Nothing will make me happier than to be able to start a project, enter all the coding, come out to the machine, pick up the first bit, and basically do something else in the garage and, you know, watch my machine run. I'm having a good time with this so far. If you're thinking of getting involved, I highly suggest that you get a hold of StepCraft, give them a call, ask them, you know, explain to them what your goals are, ask them to quote you a price on a machine, and that or there's Axiom, there's other manufacturers out there. I've had a decent time um, thus far with the guys at StepCraft, you know, helping me. They're not there on the weekend. You're not going to get help on the weekend. So just want to make that, you know, right out there, up, up front, honest, and share. At the point in time that I got involved in this, I thought it would be a little bit easier to get information, but it's not. You all have a very good next couple of weeks as I get prepared for the next video. And if there's any questions, please let me know. If you subscribe, thank you very much. I promise to continue to share what I learn as I go forward. Thank you. Bye.